Another characteristic of life is that it must maintain its internal balance. And to do this, it must regulate. Regulation has to do with maintaining that order that we talked about. Now, of course, that's going to require the energy that we, that we talked about in another characteristic of life. And it's also part of the reason for why you need to grow and develop so that you can become better at gathering that matter and that energy that you need, you know? So, but either way, going back to regulation. There's a word in biology, it's a tough word, it's listed here at the top and it's also in your notes, it's called homeostasis. Now homeostasis means, uh, stasis means to stay the same, that's what it sounds like, stasis, I'm stopped. Homo, homeo means the same, alright, so th what I'm talking about here is that to maintain balance, okay, so for example, uh, you have to maintain a certain temperature in your body for all the chemical reactions to occur and the way they're supposed to occur. So if you're too cold, you start to shiver. You start to want to protect yourself from the cold. You start to run inside. All of these things you're doing to get rid of the cold. If you drink too much water, then your, your body gets flooded, literally, and your, you know, your blood pressure might be altered, and then you have to pee to get rid of that water. And so the kidneys you know, suck up the water from your blood to get it out of your system. So that's why you want to drink too much when you end up peeing. It's all about maintaining balance. When it's too hot, you're going to start to sweat. You're going to start to want to take your clothes off. You want to start to avoid the heat. All of this is because we're trying to maintain homeostasis. And every single kind of life form will try to do this in one way or another. And that's why maintaining homeostasis or regulating your internal environment is a characteristic of life. Now, when you're trying to do this, there's going to be two basic mechanisms by which life tries to maintain balance. One is called negative feedback, and the other one is called positive feedback. Now, in negative feedback, you see, for example, here, let's say you have to perform, you have to produce a bunch of this chemical. You just got invaded in your body, and you have this antibio antibody that's really going to um, be helping protect you. So your body responds to that by making a bunch of these antibodies. So now you see you have a lot of them. But then, after a while, they do their job, and now they're no longer needed. So you want to have to stop this, otherwise you're going to be wasting your energy doing something that's not necessary. So when you have too much of something, negative feedback activates to shut it down and stop it. So negative feedback is when you do something to stop something that's happening. So you put something up, that goes down. You know, that's a good example. Um, for example, when you're walking in, in the road and you see the, 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 the sign that says you're going at 40 miles an hour, but you're supposed to be going at 35, what happens? You slow down. That's negative feedback. You know, you see that the little thing blinking saying you are actually going at 45. You're supposed to be going at, 40, uh, at 35. So then you slow down, you see it going down, you say, okay, now I'm better. That's negative feedback, you know? Positive feedback is the opposite. It's when the more you have of this, the more you want to have of this. A good example of that would be, for example, when you have a lot of money and then you want to make even more because you got used to it. But that's kind of the idea. Sometimes in life, the more you have of the product, the more that product in, uh, acts in making more of the product also. And I'll give an example of that in life in just one second. So some examples of positive feedback, for example, is your um, savings account, for example. The more money you have on your savings account, the more interest you earn, and the more money you have in your savings account, which makes more interest, more money, more interest, more money, more interest, more money, and you just keep building and building. That's positive feedback. In life, a good example of that is going to be babies being born. When you're being born, you're pushing through, you know, your mom, and it hurts. And she's in tremendous amount of pain. And so the more pain she is, the more she pushes to try to get the baby out. But the more she pushes, the more pain she gets into, which makes her push more. And then it makes her have more pain, which makes her push more. Ah! You get it? That's positive feedback. So positive feedback is about the more of a stimulus that you have, the more it actually makes you uh, stimulate yourself. And that's kind of like what positive feedback is. Negative feedback is the opposite. Your body temperature rises. I want to put that down so, you know, so it's weighted upside down. And then I sweat to make that body temperature drop. Or I eat too much sugar. The insulin in my blood spikes up to get rid of the sugar and to put it into glycogen and eventually into fat. Or I don't have enough sugar and then and so, and so glucagon goes up to put sugar back in the bloodstream. So... That is the examples of positive and negative feedback, and make sure you understand, it's easy to see. Positive feedback is when you do something, it makes this, this something go up, which makes that go up as well. Negative feedback is when you do something to stop the other thing from happening. It's not that hard to go, but either way, whatever you do, the whole point is to maintain your stable internal environment that's called homeostasis, and it's a characteristic of life.